Let's be honest for a second. Do you even remember the exact moment you started taking supplements like vitamin D3, magnesium, or vitamin K2? Probably not. Maybe your doctor recommended them. Maybe you saw a video online, or maybe a friend convinced you, and yes, they can be very helpful. But here's the big question almost nobody asks. When should you stop? After five months? A year? Or are you supposed to take them forever? Today we're going to talk about something the supplement industry would rather keep quiet. Specifically, we'll look at three of the most popular supplements for people over 50. K2, magnesium, and vitamin D3. And trust me, what you're about to learn is eye-opening. Before we dive in, do me a quick favor. Hit the subscribe button right now. It's free, it takes one second, and it really helps me keep sharing clear, science-based health content with you every week. What does supplement cycling mean? You might be thinking, if a supplement is good for me, why not take it forever? But that's not how your body works. Think of coffee. Remember your very first cup? One small coffee kept you buzzing all day. A few months later, you need three just to stay awake. That's adaptation, and your body does the same thing with supplements. This is the idea behind supplement cycling. It means you don't take the same thing endlessly. You use it for a period of time, take a break, and then start again if needed. Why bother? Three main reasons. One, adaptation. The body stops responding as strongly when it receives the same input every day. Two, hormonal effects. Some supplements can interfere with natural hormone production, like melatonin or testosterone. Three, side effects. Even natural supplements can cause digestive issues or discomfort if taken without breaks. Quick challenge. If you've been taking any of these supplements for more than three months straight, type a one in the comments right now. K2, the calcium traffic cop. Let's start with vitamin K2, which doesn't get nearly enough attention. Think of calcium as cars driving around a city. Without direction, those cars can end up in dangerous places, like your arteries, kidneys, or joints. K2 is like the traffic cop, making sure calcium ends up where it belongs, in your bones and teeth. That's why people say K2 and D3 are a power couple. D3 helps you absorb calcium, but K2 makes sure it goes to the right places. Here's what makes K2 unique. It's fat soluble, but doesn't appear to build up dangerously in the body. Long-term toxicity, practically none according to current research. The real issue is deficiency. Modern diets contain very little K2. In Japan, people eat natto, a sticky fermented soybean dish loaded with K2. Studies found they had stronger bones and less arterial calcification compared to Westerners of the same age. That's not a coincidence. So, should you cycle K2? No. Typical doses of 90 to 200 micrograms daily are safe for long-term use. One caution, if you take blood thinners like Warfarin, K2 can interfere. Always work with your doctor. Bottom line, K2 is a long-term ally, not something you need to pause. Magnesium, the engine oil of the body. Next up, magnesium. If K2 is the traffic cop, magnesium is the engine oil. Your body can run without it for a while, but eventually something breaks down. Magnesium is involved in over 300 processes in the body, energy production, muscle relaxation, nerve transmission, blood sugar balance, and sleep regulation. Here's the issue. About 50% of adults over 50 are deficient. Why? Soil depletion, processed foods, high sugar diets that flush magnesium faster. What does deficiency look like? Night cramps, heart palpitations, unexplained anxiety, trouble sleeping, the good news, if your kidneys are healthy, magnesium is one of the safest supplements to take daily. Research shows forms like glycinate, citrate, 
and malate absorb well and cause fewer side effects. Should you cycle magnesium? No. Magnesium is water soluble, which means excess amounts are flushed out in urine. Stopping only makes deficiency worse. Many people notice it right away. Within a few days of stopping, sleep quality drops. After a week or two, cramps, anxiety, and fatigue creep back. The smart move isn't to stop, it's to adjust the dose. If you eat lots of greens, nuts, and avocado, maybe 200 milligrams is enough. But most people need 300 to 400 milligrams daily, especially if stressed or having sleep issues. Magnesium is one supplement you probably should not pause. Quick pause, subscribe and keep watching. Vitamin D3, the most complicated one. Now for the most complex, vitamin D3. D3 acts more like a hormone than a vitamin. It regulates gene expression, supports immunity, strengthens bones, helps cardiovascular health, and influences mood. But here's the catch. D3 is fat soluble. It stores in your liver and fat tissue. It can stay in your body for weeks or months. That means overdosing is a real possibility, especially if you're taking high doses every day. Research shows that if you take 5,000 IU daily, your blood levels may remain high for weeks, even after stopping. That's why cycling D3 is often smart. So when should you pause? One, check your blood test. If your 25 OHD is consistently above 50 nanograms per milliliter, it's time to cut back. Two, practical options. Pause for two to four weeks. Switch to a maintenance dose of 1,000 to 2,000 IU. Or take it every other day, still effective according to studies. Your needs vary. Darker skin, you need more. Living in Canada or Northern Europe, more in winter. Over 60, you absorb less efficiently. D3 requires the most careful balancing act of the three. Warning signs, you're taking too much supplement overload doesn't hit suddenly, it creeps in slowly. Watch for these five signs. One, unusual fatigue. You take vitamins for energy but feel more sluggish. Two, digestive issues. Too much magnesium oxide equals diarrhea. Too much D3 equals constipation. Three, sleep disruption, wrong timing of magnesium or excess D, three can ruin circadian rhythm. Four, heart irregularities. Skipped beats or palpitations could mean minerals are out of balance. Five, that vague off feeling, joint aches, anxiety, exhaustion, despite taking lots of supplements. Tip, if you notice these, stop everything for a week and see how you feel. Sometimes less really is more. Your personal recipe, let's wrap it up clearly. K2, safe long-term. Just be careful if you're on blood thinners. Magnesium, don't cycle. Adjust dosage based on your diet and stress. D3, needs the most monitoring. Cycle it, reduce the dose, or adjust based on your blood work and sun exposure. Supplements are like spices in cooking. The right amount makes the dish amazing. Too much ruins it. Quick pause, if you're still watching, comment the number two below. It really motivates me and helps this video reach more people. At the end of the day, your body has its own wisdom. Supplements are tools, not magic. K2, magnesium, and D3 can all support your health, but only if used wisely. Now I want to hear from you, which supplement have you been taking the longest? Have you noticed any of the warning signs I mentioned? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I read every one. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss our weekly health tips. Thanks for watching, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next video.